So up next is our very own Professor Plastic, it's Richard Lampet. Off you go, five minutes. Great, thanks Russ. Okay, so I am not going to argue that this is the most uh, pressing problem in uh, challenge facing people and the planet. I am, however, going to argue that this is the most important topic to address so that we reduce our uncertainties. I mean, this is, the, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block, basically. There's no question about it. Five years ago, none of you would have said this is any, any significance at all. It is. Right, starting off, plastic is a wonderful material. It's du lightweight, inexpensive, durable, versatile. It's a fantastic material. And we've had 60 years of research and development <laughs> finding out about it, developing it. 19,000 different types of plastics which we've got. So we've had 60 years of research and development and 60 years of behavioural training to throw it all away. This is the cover of Life magazine back in the 50s. That's what we've been training ourselves, just to throw the stuff away as soon as we've used it. So we've got 400 million tonnes of plastic produced last year, 25 times more than in 1975, and only 11% recycled. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. More than 10 million tonnes of plastic are dumped into the ocean every single year. So that's more than <coughs> 1 million double-decker uh, buses loaded. Awful. Once in the ocean, plastic <coughs> doesn't disappear quickly. Some of it floats, some of it sinks, some of it gets washed up on the beach. So that's the macroplastics. And it causes lots of problems. I'm not going to say these are not terrible problems, but in terms of really the global significance, it's actually quite hard to argue that this is a really fundamental and <coughs> So is this a crisis? It's probably not, but that's less than 1% of the total. The rest of it is in microplastics, these very small particles. And we really have an appalling level of knowledge about how much there is there, how it gets there, what is the harm that it does, where it ends up. So microplastics <coughs> between the size of a human hair and a grain of rice. So not very big at all. What it does though is it, in contrast to some of these big pieces which actually affect the big charismatic fauna, these large, these small particles have the potential to get in right at the base of the food chain. So this is a picture of some microscopic animals, they're about a, a millimetre long, and the green bits that you can see there that's microplastic, which has been <coughs> ingested. This is, these are experiments, so put in a large concentration, and you can get them to eat it. Now, if this material gets into the base of the food chain, such as this, you have the potential of a really, really serious problem that you cannot solve by any technology. The way to solve it is to stop the stuff getting into the ocean in the first place. So it overrides all of these other issues which we've heard talking about, climate change and biological cycles, these are completely dwarfed by this material because it will affect every single one of those. It'll affect the material settling down. It'll affect the biodiversity. Everything is affected if this material turns out to be as harmful as some people expect it to be. Reasons to be positives. There's lots of pressure to change personal behavior. Reaction manufacturers and suppliers that want to serve our communities and we can vote with our feet. Developments in science and national and international uh, uh, changes. So in the short term, what we've got to do is use less, reuse what we've got, recycle it if we've really got to, don't have, use it for energy generation if you really have to, and dump it very, very carefully. The basic question, though, is that we do not know how much of this stuff there is and what harm it does. What we have to do now is to get the resources in order to do the research so that we understand this. So that's why this is the most pressing problem. It needs to have the resources so that we can address this problem and find out whether it is something that is just not very nice, it makes our beaches look ugly, it kills a few seabirds and such like, or whether it is something which fundamentally affects and damages the entire marine system. That's why we need to work on this, and that's why it's the most pressing problem. Thank you.